Good evening, everybody. Mm, for the ones who don't know me, my name is Joost. I'm working at Navitel for the last decade almost. And uh, I would like to tell you today a bit of what we are working at Navitel. Um, actually, our mission is to help pilots to become better pilots. With uh, software and hardware products we produce, develop, on a daily basis and uh, it's actually a very simple process of uh, planning of your adventures either if it's cross country or competition flying then uh, that's a practical way of navigating and the most important part at least from my experiences is analyzing the learning outcome the mistakes and the good moves and sharing with your buddies because uh, if you share with them you will move them forward and they will move you forward but before all the Naviter story has started um, now it's like 23 years ago it was like this on the takeoff pilots were grabbing gliders uh, actually there was there were there was a lot of helpers helping pilots to take off. This one is from the landing actually. Um, and... Uh, ah, no, that's not me. I was even smaller at that time, I think. This picture, by the way, is from 1995 somewhere. You were not even born. No, I was, I was. <laughs> Six years old. <laughs> not too bad but the funny thing is there was no GPS at that time and task board was looking like this uh, and the task is still the same typical task from LIAC LIAC then uh, hang glider and ramp for the, uh, for the start gate then uh, they went to halfway to Nanos, like we are doing now, and uh, castle in the, in the middle of the valley, by the main landing, back, and uh, of course goal by, by uh, Anchka Pizzeria, where they have the most traditional pizza and good wine. And everything written by hand, uh, it was all a matter of, uh, let's say, uh, not, not really safety, but fair play. Because in the air, how to judge when somebody was touching the waypoint or not was looking like this. From the right angle, and um, actually the same procedure was uh, applicable for the cross country and cops flank at that time. And the things were moving on a bit, and uh, Slovenians were always leading somehow the way. <laughs> and it's a it's a sad phrase a bit, but it was true at that time. The first uh, software which came into 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 real life was a NOS program where you have opened the Windows command window, and you were actually taking from Atlas of Slovenia the distance. On the, on the map to take out the coordinates written in the written in the contact, uh, command window and the input gave you the distance between A and B points this was the first official uh, let's say half instrument flying and also then uh, verification for the world records from Sorica uh, for the time when all this started and uh, Things were moving on a bit, and then uh, Naviter, uh, guys, uh, our CEO Andre and uh, the other co Raza, uh, were uh, actually interested how to, how to analyze the things they were doing, and uh, actually also, of, of course, first planning and then watching the flights on the map. Interesting thing, uh, the maps on, in CEO were actually shown like, uh, three years before Google came in 2000, 2001 and uh, this is also partly the reason that technology has changed during the years but 
Navitor was not able to adapt so quickly to, to other platforms. More about it later. And um, the, really like the easy, the easy thing here was just to make click and click and click to have a task and actually just to make a record declaration and also to claim it if you were successful for finding it. This, is, this one is just typical from the from uh, Kobala, but our traditional root from solids, so let's say. And of course, at the same time, it was also free to view, like just one year after, in 2002. Nobody had it at that time. Um, as you know, I mean, that screen is a, let's say, example of good practice of what to use in a cross-country or competition flying. Uh, one simple rule, if in doubt, take it out. It's applicable also in the design and maybe somewhere else, but especially in flying. Less data you have, less data you will need to process, more successful you will be in making your decisions. I see, like, through all the support I do for the pilots, they are mainly using too much data on the screens and somehow uh, they are always confused what numbers tells you and then to take decisions and then instead you would focus on the flying, on what your, let's say, competitors do and how weather looks like, where you can make a move, they are, uh, they are watching the instrument and actually try to process the data which they cannot. Like, um, in our family company, Alex Now, they have done some research, like, and they found out that, like, average pilot is able to process, like, five to seven now boxes at once, so data fields. Uh, for the time, only one at a time, but let's say more than five uh, to seven is overload in the screen to use for the regular plan. And um, yeah, then the, all this story was going on through the years. In 2011, we got the first OD1, <coughs> running CU Mobile on uh, Windows C, and actually up to today, uh, this was our uh, navigation device. You, how many of you are using the OD here? The other system. <laughs> um, and. Um, from CEO, from simple, from simple uh, click on the map, we came to the CEO Cloud, um, which is uh, more modern in the, in the working in any browser on uh, all devices, and uh, of, of course with all the live data in. Like the beauty of it is, like you can use everything. Um, so the skylines already flown flights for the planning, then all the weather data, uh, the moment uh, from uh, payable services like SkySite and Meteo. But one thing didn't change through the years is like any flight is copy paste of already flown flight. Um, just improve, just a better version of previous flight. This is example of first Slovenian 200 triangle. Original idea was from Urban and Alias, from uh, 777 designers. They were just never, uh, let's say, motivated enough to take computer in their hands and to switch three points in the right way to make 200. And uh, at that time I was working with them. And uh, I knew how to fly this. <laughs> and the lucky thing was they were... They were in France at that time, and I was able to, to, to make it. But for me, for me was this, uh, let's say, a big achievement at that time. But uh, uh, the good thing was also I have a job uh, at Navitor because of that. And uh, yeah, like, since as, uh, as the first cycle was done with the CEO, then CEO Mobile and the original Audi, and uh, because the uh, Windows C, like the Audi we know now, uh, is slowly getting obsolete as a hardware and software, and we are using phones and uh, all these fancy things today uh, connected to the internet. 
we are then developed the SEO Navigator. Uh, SEO Navigator is uh, is an app running on Android and iOS, and um, Corona actually bring the the good thing that we have that we really took our time to develop it. Uh, and uh, putting a lot of efforts into the uh, clean user interface so it's really easy to use and uh, definitely it has the best maps in the business uh, comparing let's say to the, any other app we use uh, then all the live layers if you have it connected to the internet in the air it has uh, like the most useful at the moment is a rain radar so guys, I can check if we can stay top or not. Then, uh, yeah, live traffic through OGN server, open glider network. Then all the weather integrations live. Uh, also live, I mean also like weather integrations in, uh, in weather predictions. But also the live data about the weather are coming. And um, since like last week it also has a task. Uh, then uh, all the da uh, let's say all the gliders worldwide which were existing since 1995 up to today we have uh, put into one database which we are regularly updating because that's what, that was always the problem manufacturers they didn't give their data and uh, pilots were always asking for the polar data how good a glider I have in reality we fly much worse things that we think we have, so for the instrument the mat is relevant and we need to put in realistic data. And uh, the polar system navigator are for everything and uh, quite precise, I need to say. Then of course, uh, every, anything else what we expect, like thermal assistant, uh, airspace warnings, uh, Bluetooth to connectivity to external uh, devices and when you land of course logbook then all the, all the flights are directly set to the city cloud. If I show it a bit how it works in reality. Uh, the map screen doesn't look as well because of TV resolution. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, so the maps then like by default you have all the layers, you can switch between the, the map configuration. I like the most this one, default CEO, because it's, uh, let's say for paragliders, most useful ones, usable one, then uh, layer data. All, uh, com there is inside a complete database of takeoffs and landing uh, worldwide. And then, depending on the weather integrations you have, you can set what you would like to see inside. Uh, wind is working perfectly, especially in sky side for paragliding. Convergence, I can say it's very useful for a really long cross country flying, let's say intensive, uh, because you can really then. Uh, in air, you can decide like to go 10 kilometers or 5 kilometers left or right, which uh, which routes to take, so you can really get the best lines uh, out from the day. Um, and uh, most people will like this, like thermals. <coughs> if you go on place where you don't know it, where to climb, how to fly. You have the thermal uh, overlay in the flight all the time, or when you are leading the comp, you can decide how to win on your own. You don't need to think about. Actually, the funny awesome. thing here is that yeah. I have a feature request. Can you make this uh, live? This live? Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the next step. Okay. Okay. So the base with this is set up, but with the internet, with the platform we have now. And all the structure of the app is made in a way that these features are coming. That's the next step. Even in, even live flight prediction. So live thermals. I mean live thermals. 
Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Like live thermals for the pilots which are flying in front or in the back. Okay. Yeah. But this is something what you can already see on the OGN layer. You see their altitude, you see their, um, their uh, vario. Um, yeah. Weather forecasts are uh, weather forecasts are sky side of top meter, uh, so payable services. So we just integrated them. We will integrate more for sure, uh, but uh, mainly this uh, this is very difficult because the API integrations from the other providers are not documented well, or they even don't want to to make let's say. Uh, common businesses. Then, uh, yeah, thermals, convergences, all the weather layers. And, uh, yeah, uh, once you go to menu, you can see this. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the tasks are in now. Uh, anyone who would like to try it, uh, can send me an email to support at naviter.com. I will make free seal subscription. Like, I don't promise tomorrow because I travel to Austria for another content presentation. But next week, for sure, we can make one month trial for everyone who would like to have it so we can really test the things. Yeah, free version is, but it doesn't allow, let's say, flying tasks. So you can already sign up and everything, but it doesn't allow flying tasks. You see only one collection in the cloud, then only one flight in the logbook, so it's kind of limited. You can only navigate back to takeoff and so on. Mm. Then the polars I was talking about, and um, yeah, logbook. This one will get some time now because it's internet is very slow. Uh, various sources. We merged a few of them and uh, we are trying, like, if anyone doesn't find his glider in the database, can also send an email to support at narita.com and we will edit in. Maybe some of them are missing, but very few. Maybe just uh, stand, I need to ask you because you have a very new company. <laughs> and uh, maybe some others, like, really like specific cases. And uh, yeah, if you already have a uh, XC tracer or something, you can connect it easily. Or Hyper is working since last software update as well. Or I Bluetooth. Uh, yes. Yes, also. Uh, like Zeolite, if you take a look, it's more person as this any other way. And they are also scaled, like, it should be very precise. Let's see. Yeah, any questions at this point? No one, that's good. And yeah, um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, navigator, uh, subscription, full price is uh, 60 per year, including 20% tax is zero uh, for the full service. Uh, Normally for the first year we give 50% discount, so anyone who would like to have it just says, I give the coupon code, you purchase it online and that's it. And yeah, as I mentioned before and maybe you have seen today there was some uh, movie movie show on the takeoff. <laughs> we are not used to, that, to do that, but uh, this is our future, so if you are speaking about the history then the then a bit of the best of Naviter, what we have today, this is what we will have in the future. Ah, this is our baby, which is coming. Uh, hopefully, demo devices are already shipping to our dealers, and uh, hopefully we will be able to deliver it to the customers in one month. If somebody would like to take a look, here it is. This one doesn't have serial numbers, so we cannot track it, but still. 
you can take a look at it. Um, any questions? How much weight? How much weight? Um, I think it's too heavy if you have a uh, like lighter. <laughs> no, no, but uh, I think it's around 400 grams. But still, it's made for cross country and for the comps flying, for real flying. It. Uh, uh, yeah, like for real flying, not jumping down, because we do everything like that. Even like it's all, it's, I mean, like when you go to fly, you take this. When you go to jump down, you take your phone and nothing. Um, yeah, it has very bright uh, screen. Uh, all the connectivity we expect to have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. At the internet, and uh, the good thing when you land, you can charge your phone because the battery is super good. 15 to 18 hours of flying. So now you don't need to, to stay without phone anymore to charge your flying computer, but it's the other way. Cool. Uh, Flara? Uh, yeah, it's Fanet inside. So Fanet Plus. There will be two versions one with Fanet, one without. Maybe we, the first versions we will be without, they will be without, but then it will be just a software update. So it uses the CU software? Yeah, it's CU Navigator software. So the software you can test already on your phone, and then the same software we run on the device. I mean, you can see. Specific hardware for you. Yes, it's our. It's not. It's not a tablet taken from China. It's a motherboard developed just for the just for the CU Navigator and just for the apps with all the sensors like pressure, inertia sensor, so the accelerometers and the uh, GPS. So it doesn't have any, any operating system adjustments? No, it's running Android. Android, so and, uh, and, uh, Android with the CO Navigator app. Right? But you can use it for other applications? Yes, but it will boot up directly to Navigator, then in the app you will be able to uh, also to see the Android, to use it for something else if you want to. But in the first place, it's not a phone, it's a flying device. Yes? yes. And this one I have, you can see. Cool. You sell it with a SIM card on radio or do you have to provide it? No, no, no. <laughs> like, we, did, uh, we don't want to become a like, uh, mobile phone provider. So we still want to develop the apps. What is the price? Uh, the price will be, will be slightly above the current price range. So in the existing code now it's like retail price around 900. The new one will be slightly above, uh, but in the upcoming news we will publish on the internet. If one would like to book it, you can already send an email as well, so because we are already doing priority list for the pre-orders. Anyone else? Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>